Yeah, I, I think that's all very well put. I use the same shoe analogy. I always like to say if, you know, if you want to be good at basketball, you, you go and buy LeBron James's sneaker, that's not going to help. But also what's really not going to help is buying his shoe size. That's silly. You know, we're, we're all very different physiologically. I just I just want to show everybody, I also have my mouthpiece too. Okay, my mouthpiece is handy. It's right here. All right. Uh, <laughs> so I play roughly five to six different mouthpieces when I'm in the studio. For me, it comes down to color. You know, we're asked to do a lot of different things in the studio. We'll do, you know, one cue might be a really orchestral thing, right? So then I've got my American classic, and then we'll, the literally the next thing will be some big band chart. So for me, I, I have to find what's gonna help me get through like a six or a nine hour work day, uh, still playing cleanly uh, at a high level. So I, um, well, I, I think it totally makes sense to have kind of your go-to mouthpiece, and I, I do warm up on this one mouthpiece every single day. Uh, I, I change constantly, and I don't think there's anything wrong with either approach. I think it's really important that you kind of know who you are and what your limitations are. I did this piece, um, this uh, timpani concerto that out of nowhere calls for like a high concert E flat, and I was kind of left with this choice of, well, I could practice really hard for a month and a half, or I'm going to pop in this mouthpiece for six seconds, and the mouthpiece does the job. So it's like, well, okay, that was an easy choice. So it, it really comes down to you know what your what your workload is and what kind of things you're you're asked to do. But yeah, I, I totally agree with everything that's been said.